Hello, thanks for clicking in to find out more about what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2011 Simulation Premium Products. My name is Bruce Schaller, and I'm a Senior Applications Engineer for Go Engineers, busy Central Coast California section. I've been utilizing our analysis tools since they really first began working inside of SOLIDWORKS, and I can say without hesitation that 2011 has the most significant enhancement to the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium Bundle. Let's get right into it. Starting out with my favorites here. I'm going to go in and basically look at it from going to a linear dynamic study. And traditionally in the past, we've had tools that allow for random vibration study, tools that conform to some of the mill standard 810F standards for random vibrations in the form of coarse PSD curve excitation inputs, basically units of power spectral density curves. So basically, however, when it came to the shock loads, our premium tools were limited to do classical shock pulse loading rather than the standards to Milton specs which have to do with 516.5 standards that require a shock response spectrum curve for the force excitation inputs. Curves that comply to the Applied Technology Council standards, or what we know as ATC. If you want to get technical, it's ACT-3-06 uh, tentative provisions that were set forth in 1984 or something when I was graduating high school. So anyway. Let's get right into quickly showing you an example of where this is. Now, with our simulation linear dynamic, we have a new module. It's the response spectrum analysis module. This is where we're going to be allowed to input shock response spectrum curves. So rather than me starting with a response spectrum analysis, most of the dynamics and shock response analysis that you'll do would require frequency analysis to start. So I have a frequency analysis that's already been done in 2011. Note some of the differences. You can see right away which parts have been meshed successfully by putting a little mesh symbol on the part icon. So coming into this, I want to use this study to go in and create a new dynamic study. And during that creation, I'll call this go engineer shock response. And actually, it will be a response spectrum analysis study, just as though I was picking it from scratch. I can pick it from this menu here. And it'll begin this new shock response spectrum study by allowing me to utilize everything that was already created and ran and solved in the frequencies. We would like to look at our frequency studies once again because we can actually look at our mass participation. We can make sure we've included enough frequencies that we've actually captured 80% of mass and the direction that we're actually shocking the product can see with the 30 frequency results that I've got here, I actually have 83% and 99%. So I could go forward with the shock response study to do that from here, since this has already been meshed. And you could basically show the mesh. I'm using the new curve base mesh that's a standard now for the default for 2011. Very fast base measure. To get back into the shock response, we would go into uniform base excitation. And I can specify acceleration because our units in a shock response spectrum are in Hertz G. And so I'd want to go ahead and specify that curve input by just going in and I have it in my buffer so I can paste the curve input in. Actually, I'd like that in Hertz, so maybe paste it again. And 
I have hertz in my G over here for my multiplier in this direction. So basically, in order to put in a shock response spectrum curve, it's that easy. You're just going in and put it in in the area of external loads. Where might we want to use these? You can use a shock response spectrum analysis rather than time history analysis to estimate the response of structures to random or time-dependent loading environments, such as earthquakes, wind loads, ocean waves, jet engine thrust, or even, you know, the reaction of the rocket motor vibrations, just to name a few. But to show you the results of this, which on a product like this, take generally about 15 minutes to run. And if I would look at the stress plot, it's automatically going to plot the highest stress level so you can see from the greatest amount of shock that you've put in your curve in that response time. And it will go ahead and show you on Mises or the other typical analysis outputs what stress levels you have in your overall assembly. So that's it for a beginning. I hope you guys get the tools soon and are able to get some results in the shock spectrum analysis arena. Thank you very much.